so we are we were discussing about the the fish biology a bit the last time we had our session um, we are not going to go into very detail on fish biology since we have very different groups here from a aquatic science to zoologists biologists as well as uh, even non biologists so anyway we need some basics basic biology as we have discussed a lot on the beginning because the fisheries is a multidisciplinary subjects you need the biology you need the management you need the economics um you need the oceanography and a lot more so <clears throat> So today's lecture will very briefly go through um, the fish feeding behavior a bit uh, because this is very important. At the end, I will, we will discuss why it is so important. So we have vast number of or de degree of uh, feeding behaviors among fishes. Some are, they just eat plankton or while the others, they eat small fish or oh, that some can be extremely dangerous or can be very carnivorous. So the, the fish are in between some. Uh, so <clears throat> why are we concerned about them? Like for example, now we know about the sharks. Um, usually we know that sharks, they can be very carnivorous not always there are some carnivores i mean some sharks even they can be um planktivores right? you might not heard about even right? and <clears throat> you know all these feeding habits and, and the behavior something to do with their uh, biology as well know that the different sharks live in different areas you know that some Fish live, some sharks live in the bottom waters, they will never come to the, the coastal zone. But whereas some sharks will be just going around the coastal waters, they might not go to the deep water, right? So all these are actually some adaptations to live in particular environment as well as um, reduce the competition as well. You know, otherwise if the old sharks are in the same area, it's going to be a huge competition for one another. So. Uh, there are huge diversity again in the feeding behavior as well as other biological things. So that's why we have to uh, discuss a little bit of uh, feeding behavior here. So um, as you can see here, this the basking shark, one in the, the bottom, it is a filter feeder. They are not carnivores like like other sharks, right? So the, that's something unique in the sharks. Like, likewise, there are many differences among sharks even. Um, <clears throat> at the same time, you know, some sharks can be extremely dangerous, so they can even uh, attack human beings. They have been attacking even the, the people when they are in the beaches sometimes, I mean, not the beach, at least in the coastal zone. It's some shark attack. So, uh, and uh, even among other uh, fish species, you can see their different adaptation. Like even their mouth is very different. Their shape is different. The length is different. The the position is different. And and there are lots of other adaptations as well in their. Uh, mouth as well as in their uh, elementary canal for different feeding habits, right? Um, <clears throat> so, um, so why do they have different feeding habits? What kind of adaptation do they have? Just to get an, an um, idea, I will see a small video um, how some fish they grab their prey or how they feed. And just to get an, an idea, I'll sh share that this video.
Are we eating them or not? Yeah. Hey, it's me, Destin. Welcome back to Smarter Every Day. So in the last episode of Smarter Every Day, we revealed that fish eat by sucking in the water, by opening up their mouth, and then once they do that, they allow the water to exit back behind the operculum by opening up their gill flaps. It's really cool. But the problem was we only captured the footage above water. So Dr. Seymour and Richard Fitzpatrick at James Cook University have gone back and they made a rig so they could do it underwater. So let's go check it out. So we're going to do the Barramundi high speed feeding sequence again for you, but this time from underwater. What we've done is we've modified this camera housing. We've put the phantom camera inside there. Jamie's going to use his stick with a prawn, but no hooks, so we're not damaging the fish at all. And we shall see how they look at high speed from underwater. Yep, a little bit closer to you. Oh, got it. <laughs> look good. Let's have a look. All right, here we go. Watch the water flow through the mouth and out the gills. But why doesn't the water flow in through the gills? If you watch closely, it's because the flap overlaps and it slams shut like a check valve, only allowing flow in one direction. Okay, we hope you like that one, Destin. That demonstrates everything, but underwater. Bye from Australia. Ciao! Bye, buddy. <laughs> okay, the next thing we're gonna look at is the fact that fish can throw their lips forward. Now this helps them close the gap with their prey. There's two more clips that Richard sent to us that we're gonna look at. The first one is the stonefish, which you know is the most venomous fish in the world. It closes its gap really, really fast with its lips. It's amazing. The second one is called the sling jaw wrasse. Now this one's just unreal. It's like a mechanical hinge structure. I'll let you see it, but everything is in slow motion. Check it out. So the stonefish just chills out looking like, well, a stone until the prey gets within its strike radius. Then this happens. This is a sling jaw wrasse. Prepare your brain for what you're about to see. Yeah. That's crazy. Let's watch it again from the side, and you can see, if you look close, the shadow of that little fish as it zips up through the sling jaw. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the Right, uh, I hope you got a very good idea about how the fish can feed on their prey or how they can act on their prey. Right, uh, right. Uh, they're just uh, slow motion videos, but uh, you will, you, no one would notice how they actually they grab that their prey. So all these are adaptations that they have. Um, Actually, that video has created in the James Cook University where I got my PhD from. That the aquarium was actually the next to my office where I worked use. So, <clears throat> yes, um, so fish feeding, if you very briefly, we look at uh, like what are the different types of feeding habits. Uh, we, we know all about these herbivores, detritivores, and we can see some example from a uh, fish as well, all different types of uh, 
the feed-in behaviors that, that you, we already know. Right? Uh, so that also include the carnivores um, <clears throat> and different form of uh, habits as well, right? So um, some adaptation in finch for planktivory or the, for the plant, uh, planktivorous fish, especially in their uh, gill rakers, right? Actually, um, we were supposed to have like a practical on this, this like a feeding habit. We will just see uh, different type of fish and um, get a uh, practical idea about the, their feeding habit. But um, this time we have no much uh, opportunity to do that one, right? So, but uh, the, just looking at actually their gill, the, these are the gill filaments for their uh, respiration and the one in the top are the gill rakers, therefore the filter feeding. So the planktivorous fish usually they have very long and close uh, gill rakers. So that's, that's the indication that they are planktivorous, right? If they are carnivorous, usually these uh, gill rakers are in, uh, very far apart. Or so there, there's a big gap between the, the gill rakers because they, they don't need any uh, uh, gill rakers for their feeding, right? So from <clears throat> even some other, um, uh, even this shark, which I was talking before, like a basking shark. So they also have this kind of a, a, a filter feeding behavior. You can see the, the internal, how their mouth is bit adapted for filter be feeding behavior. And right? so all these are uh, different adaptations. Uh, some fish are adapted to like full time that throughout their life, they just feed on plankton. We call the, uh, the obligatory planktivores or the obligate planktivores. Uh, most of the small fish like uh, we talk about the, the salia, hurula, right? the sardines, they are uh, mostly obligate planktivores whereas some are facultative or they become planktivores uh, when they have a chance. Um, <clears throat> on the other hand, uh, like the feeding behavior is different from one another, as you have seen the suction feeding. So some can um, use some suction to grab a prey. Right? So that also uh, may be very different from one another. The, very different uh, form of a uh, uh, suction as well, right? So, whereas the others are the ramp feeders, like a forcefully they grab a, a prey, and that's we call ram feeding in in, in fish biology. Uh, just like a tuna, they catch a, a, a prey uh, by swimming fast and grab, and then it's called the ram feeding. The others are suction feeders; they grab a prey along with water and released through the gills and there is no chance of uh, escaping, right? Um, <clears throat> you might have, I don't know whether you have seen, uh, there is a one fish in the lagoons, even in Sri Lanka called the archer fish. Like they can throw some water. I don't know, you might have seen in the videos. I actually, I had a video uh, like, uh, they take some water into the mouth and throw, I mean, even into a tree, maybe some few feet above, they can throw that water, especially if they see an insect or some small animal in a tree or a leaf, they throw that water and then uh, grab that insect. Right? So likewise, there are so many adaptations in a fish for their uh, feeding behavior. And then here you see, uh, whale, especially the baleen whale, you see how their mouth is adapted to for the filter feeding behavior. I mean, they usually eat a, the smaller shrimp or prawn like um, organisms called krill. Krill kill again, so again, to the their filter feeders and see how these are adapted uh, for this uh, uh, particular behavior. Whereas the 
uh, the the rats you have seen in that video right? they have something called the protrusible uh, jaws where they can uh, put their jaw in front i mean you can uh, extend their jaw right? especially the reef fishes because you know the in the reef it's very hard to navigate and even find a prey because of small the small fish are hiding in the small crevices so they have this uh, the uh, snout or sometimes protrusible mouths uh, or jaws actually to grab prey right so that is another uh, behavior <clears throat> And even the way they're catching their prey is also different. Right? Some are uh, active pursuit, like they actively grab, like sharks, they can actively grab uh, a prey, whereas others are stalking. Like uh, you have seen the that uh, stonefish in that video, right? Stonefish, extremely venomous fish in the, the bottom, right? but they are just hiding and wait for the prey to come and then and, and just grab it, right? While others are ambush, right? They ambush and the, the others are called luring, that's, uh, I'll show you later, like uh, this one, the anglerfish, Anglerfish, right? adaptation, it's like a, a, a barb, right? And when the prey attracted to that one, they just, just grab, right? So we can malubana malutin. So likewise, there are many adaptation in there. So and look at here that's this image just to show there like uh, the different feeding behavior, you know, this. It, though it is a shark, uh, so that not every shark will attack human because their feeding behavior is different. Right? Just to show that one here, um, <clears throat> and the other adaptation we will take the the ad different adaptation for the feeding behavior here. You can see in the, some adaptations are in the jaws, as you seen before, and some are their teeth or internal, um, the, the buccal cavity, buccal cavity, or even as I mentioned, the gill rakers can be different, right? Um, even their digestive tract will be very different from a, a different uh, fish with di different feeding habit, especially the, the length of the gut, right? So uh, like in the herbivores, plant eaters, they have very lengthy uh, gut because digestion take long time. Whereas the carnivorous fish usually have a shorter um, gut because uh, they can easily digest uh, the meat, right? And some differences, even the, the, the digestive apparatus or the, 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 the some parts also different in some fish. Uh, the all these are adaptation for different feeding behavior, right? Uh, so, as I mentioned, uh, the, some have even some fish adapted even without a stomach, right? Uh, but all all depend, right? And that's where the you can look at the the gut length. It's called the relative gut length. That's the 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 length of the gut to the, the body length ratio. Usually this ratio is higher in the planktivorous or um, herbivorous fish and, and it is, uh, uh, the ratio is smaller in the, the carnivorous fish, right? And, and I have given here the, some of the ratios for like in the, the carbs uh, to carnivorous fish. They are, even the zooplankton eaters, I mean, you see the, the gut length is very small because the digestion of zooplankton is very easy. Right? So uh, if you are a biologist, you see 
just looking at their gut length, you can imagine what kind of a feeding behavior they would have. Right? The other thing is uh, the like the, the fish nutrition requirement also different from one another. Uh, whether they are omnivorous or carnivorous fish, right? that is very important. Uh, if you are like a keeping a fish at home, you might know that uh, we have to feed fish, different fish in with different feed, because if they are extremely carnivorous, then you have to provide them with more uh, protein rich food. Right? So you have to buy from the shops uh, high protein uh, feed for the carnivorous fish, whereas the omnivorous fish they don't need. Right, so that differences are also there. Um, so <clears throat> that's very basically different types of feeding behavior. But um, again, we can like uh, categorize or we can group fish based on their feeding behaviors as well, right? Like by the way fish take their food, then we can divide them as the oral manipulators, like they use their, their just the mouth uh, to get their feed. Of course, all get them, use the mouth, but uh, the way they use mouth for feeding, like in the parrotfish, where they live in corals, they were called the scrapers. They like scrape the coral polyps and they eat, right? Scrape. Uh, and the, the chunk biters, like the sharks and piranhas, they can like grab a whole prey or even a part of a prey in, a, in, a, in a one attempt. Like this. They have very strong uh, jaws to grab feet. Right, whereas the others are the ram feeders, uh, the chase and uh, grab their prey. Uh, I have given some examples also in this uh, uh, diagram. And the, <clears throat> the other types are the, the suction feeders. We have seen that uh, 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 in the rasses, how they can, uh, how can they use the suction to grab uh, fish, right? Whereas the, some of them have the protrusible uh, jaws where they can extend their jaws for grabbing fish or the, their prey, right? And even, you know, structurally they are sometimes different. Usually the, the way their jaw is um, formed, like they can sometimes extend their jaws a large amount to uh, enable them to catch their uh, prey, right? So on the other hand, the differences are in the, their, the, the position of their mouth. And you can see the, the few examples here, like in the top one, uh, this is a hatchet fish. Uh, usually you will see this in the half beaks. Uh, I don't know if you remember the half peak. Uh, uh, that is the Muralla. Muralla Kelatin Mavikalati. So their mouth is in the top, we call the superior mouth. Right? So, which means they can grab the food when they are above their position. Right? So, they cannot grab any food if it is below their position, right? So that is adaptation for them. Whereas some fish, they have terminal mouths. So mouth is at the end, so they can grab anything when they are swimming. Right? Whereas the many fish like in the bottom living fish, they have inferior mouth. Their mouth is facing down. So they have to always feed on fish, any prey item that is that should be below their position, right? So they can't catch something above. If you want to catch something above, they have to first go to the surface and um, look for bottom. But, uh, you know, it's catching a fish, fast moving fish, will take a long time. So it's a bit hard for them to um, catch, right? So, <clears throat> The other thing is the, the structural differences in their mouths as 
you can see here the one I mentioned before. Uh, this uh, um, what is called the anglerfish. We make the monkey or anglerfish came in a feeding adaptation. Make a lure cup. Make a me anitmalunga track karagan pavichika. Um, <clears throat> other uh, adaptation are in, the, in their mouth, especially the teeth. You can see the, the, the different types of teeth, very different one another, like uh, this one. Katuala, uh, if you have heard about the, the fish called Katuala. So they're having uh, uh, teeth like this, it's extremely sharp. And you can see they are even coming out of their mouth, right? Next time when you go to the market, look for this Khatuwalla fish. Um, I don't know whether in the practical class you have seen that one, most likely. Whereas the other have a different form of a, a teeth like a willy form, like elongate or the needle-like uh, needle -like, uh, teeth, whereas the some have blade like, especially the, the the fish with the strong jaws, carnivores, they have this blade like uh, uh, teeth, like in the sharks and piranhas, well known for carnivorous behavior. And the others having this canine form, or just like a, a dog's uh, teeth. It's very similar, that's why it's called canine form. Um, <clears throat> right, the, the, the last type with the, the uh, Cardiform or the like, uh, not actually last on the cardiform, and there's another molariform that's something like in the the skates and a uh, race. They have this kind of a very flat or uh, uh, teeth that's used for grinding. Whereas the cardiform, uh, small pointed teeth, something like this. Right. So all these are different. Uh, feeding adaptation that uh, uh, we would see among uh, fish. And again, the, the other adaptation in their mouth, like in the gear rakers, as I mentioned before, uh, you see the, the carnivorous fish, mostly having this kind of uh, gill rakers. Uh, very, uh, the individual rakers are apart from one another, whereas the the plantivorous or filter feeders having a more uh, closer gill rakers, right? So, so these are the very basic adaptation that you would see among fish uh, for their different adaptation to um, uh, their feeding habit. And as also I mentioned before, the their nutritional needs also very different, but uh, this is very important if you are like uh, talking about the aquaculture. But uh, in like this lecture series, we are just talking about the marine fish where we are not feeding them. So that's not really a big matter. But of course, if you are culturing them, if you are keeping in at home, that's, that's where you have to be very, very, um, you need to have give a very good concern about their the feeding behavior and feeding habits and right. Nothing got clotted. You are little mal with the karama. I don't take a pound, but over the enemy. Right. So it took a malunto, a young size again in a hair. You're going to color same gun a bear, right? Because this their feeding requirements very different from one another. Right, you have to feed. You have to study them. You have to uh, study their feeding behavior, or at least you have to read about their feeding behavior. You have to feed them accordingly. Right, without that, uh, you won't be able to keep them uh, the way they should be. Right, and that's where um, <clears throat> you have to think of the the their different feeding habit, right? So, <clears throat> so that's about the, the feeding behavior, 
right? Uh, I just went through very quickly and there's no anything uh, uh, special, uh, very basic things. But now why it is so important here for the fisheries management, um, the, like uh, when the fishermen want to catch a fish, right? We, how we are going to catch fish or what kind of a bait to be used and what kind of fishing gear to be used. It all depends on actually their feeding behavior and also what time to catch them. They all depend on actually on their feeding behavior. Right? So uh, then a fisherman, they need to have actually a very good understanding about the fish biology. I mean, at least their feeding behavior. Right? Without that, I mean, they got get this uh, uh, information actually from like from the experience. It's, it's learning from the their colleagues or their the the older uh, people. So of course, they need to have a very good uh, understanding about the the their uh, feeding behavior. Uh, for the fishermen, right? Uh, that's why we need uh, to know about these things uh, as a fisheries manager, especially if you are going to manage them, you need to have very good understanding on that aspect, right? So that's basically what I'm going to talk about the fish feeding behavior. If you have any questions, now it's the time.